Hi, everyone. So today we are working on factoring by grouping. It's factoring and it's grouping. So we're looking to make a group out of what we have already. So let's show you guys an example. So, so today we're doing factor, factoring by grouping. Fact to whoops, can't spell it. Facting, factoring. Oh my goodness, Mr. Co, what's wrong with you? Factoring by grouping. Okay, and these work specifically when we have four terms. Four terms. So let's look at the factoring that we've done before. If we say x squared plus 6x plus 8, okay? we said if it's a trinomial, we can try to factor into two binomials. And the trick for this problem is that we're just looking at the back number. We said, hey, 8 is 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. Were there any common factors before? Could we have taken out an X from everyone? Could we have taken out a two from everyone? There was no common factors. Uh, so we couldn't, we had nothing common. So that we go ahead and say one, eight, two, four. We see that two and four add up to become six. X, X, two and four. And we need a positive, positive to become positive eight. And a two X plus four X is positive six X. All right, got it, not a problem. Now factoring by grouping though, is a new type of skill that we haven't really worked on yet. Okay, we haven't worked on it because we haven't learned it. So let's go ahead and give us an example of what that would look like. If I give you our first problem being x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus, uh, let's do, no, oh, let's do one more, I'm sorry, 2x. Let's do, let's do 3x plus 6. Okay, so this doesn't follow our traditional factoring trinomials. This is a whole new skill, folks. And I want to first start off with what we normally start off with. Is there anything in common for all four terms? I see an x, 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 no x. I can't take out an x. I see 2 and 2, but that doesn't work for me. I see a 3 and 3. So not everyone has a three. So here is what factoring by grouping does. It says, don't look at everyone. Don't. Just look at the first two terms and the back two terms. And it's a try. That's just try it. It might not work. Not everything is factored by grouping. Okay, not everything is. But at least let's try it first because this could save us some time. Folks, looking at x cubed and 2x squared, what terms do we have in common in both the x cubed and the 2x squared? Do we have a 2 in common? Do we have a x in common? How many x's would you say we have in common? Let me write this out. x in front is x, x, x. In back, we have two x's, don't we? So how many do we have in common? We have at least 2 and 2. Right? They both have at least two. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, since you have stuff in common, we're going to factor you out. We're going to undo that multiplication. Ignore the back. That doesn't exist. Just look at the front. We have, hey, at least x squared in common. I'm going to write x squared in front, left over. If I took away my x squared, I still have one x left. If I took away my x squared, I still have a two left. Now, I want you guys to double check that this makes sense. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times two is two x squared. We're not changing the value of it. We're just changing the way it looks by factoring. Okay, does anyone need me to re repeat that step, please? Anyone need me to repeat that step? Okay. Now look at the next group, the three x and the six. The three x and the six. What terms does the three x and the six have in common? What can I divide them both by? that they have in common. Would you guys be okay that they both share a common three? Give me a moment. Okay. So would you guys be okay and we have a common three? Let me go ahead and highlight that for you guys. So you have a common three and a common three. If I factor out the common three, what type of three is a plus three and minus three? I'm gonna call that a plus three for us. We have a leftover of X plus two. Now, we said when we were looking at this problem that we had nothing in common globally throughout the whole problem. We didn't have a common x. We didn't have a common 3. 
we just had a common x squared in the front and a common three in the back, right? So we separate our groups. Now, I want you guys to look at this new, um, new organized form of this problem now that we have. Do we have anything in common in the front and the back? What stands out to you? What do we have now in common in the front and the back? Hopefully you notice that we both now have an x plus two and we are gonna factor that x plus two out. X plus two. If I take out the x plus two, what do we have left? We have a x squared plus three. And that's how we factor using grouping a four term polynomial, okay? So we have four terms here. We can't use our three term method that we worked really hard on, which is super important still. But we have a four term problem. How can we factor that? And this is the method is called factor by grouping. So just like a doctor or pharmacist, when you're sick, they give you a specific drug, a specific treatment to, to heal you, make you feel better. Same thing, we're like acting like doctors and pharmacists. We're seeing a problem and we're using specific tools to help us solve for it. It's an important skill for us. We see a problem, we don't just try anything. We, we think about from our past, what can we use to solve this problem? Okay, let's give you guys another problem as we try this. I think our best way to learn this is looking at examples. Here is 2x cubed minus x squared plus 20x minus 10. Now, do you see anything in common all the way across the board? Do they all have x's? Do they all have twos? They're almost, they almost all had twos, right? Look at the x squared, that one almost had a two. So it turns out there's nothing across the board that we have in common. So I want you guys to break it up, look at the front and then look at the back. What could you tell me is in common between x, 2x cubed and x squared? What do they have in common that we can factor out? Okay. Hopefully you're thinking x squared. If you guys want to type that in the chat, you would just type x caret 2. That's how you would type it. So I see x squared in common. So let me write that out. So we have x, 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 and we have two x's here. I want to take away all, not three, all two from both of them. So if I take away two, we still have one left in the front, right? If you have three dollars and I take away one, two dollars, you still have one dollar left. So I have two x, because we didn't touch the two. And in the back, we took away everything. Now here is the careful part. What is x squared divided by x squared? Is that zero? That's actually one. So please remember to hold, leave the placeholder one whenever you factor something out. Because factoring is we're undoing the problem. And if I put a zero there, it completely disappears, which is not what I want. We still need that placeholder there. Let me double check that works. x squared times two x, it becomes two x cubed and x squared times one is just x squared. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back now. We have 20 and 10. What do, can you tell me that we have in common? 20 and 10. Would you be okay that they both have a 10? So let's take out a positive 10 from both. Make sure you do write the sign positive or negative. If you don't write the sign, it will be wrong because it wouldn't be an, ex, uh, an equation expression already anymore. So if I take out the 10, we still have the 2x minus 1. Now take a step back. Globally, do you see any factors that are exactly the same now? Do you see anything that's exactly the same? You see the 2x minus 1, right? Now we would never have seen 2x minus 1 up here. That's not obvious to us. So that's why this method is super important because it reveals the hidden factor inside. So I'm going to write 2x minus 1 in front and write down what's left over. If I get rid of 2x minus 1, we still have a x squared in front and a 10. Okay. Let's try another problem. So here, this one looks a lot more crazy. 45 x cubed plus 18 x squared plus 35 x plus 14. This looks like some huge numbers. And if I ask you to do this without the skill, 
you would be at this problem for a long time, just randomly guessing. But since you can see one, two, three, four terms, we're going to use factor by grouping. Now, let's look at the front and the back. Let's go and look at these. Looking at the front, what term do you think I can relate 45 and 18 with? 45 and 18. What term, what number do you think I can relate 45 and 18 with? Hopefully you notice I can use nine, right? Nine times five, nine times two. You can do nine. And then how many X's do we have in common? One, two, three, one, two. We have at least two in common. So let's take out the nines and the X squared. If I do that, what's left over? This is something that you guys have to practice seeing. I have a five X in the front and I have a two in the back left over. So if we take out nine X squared, we still have a five X plus two left. Five X plus two left. In the back, I see 35 and 14. 35 is seven times five. And 14 is seven times two. You can of course probably notice that they both have a seven. So that's the only term that we're gonna take out. We're gonna take out a positive seven. If I take out a positive seven, we're still left with a five and two. So five X plus two. Oh my goodness. After I wrote it, I realized five X plus two. They both have a five X plus two. And that was our hidden factor. That was slimmer in the front and the back. Let's go ahead and pull those out. Five X plus two. What's left over? Nine X squared plus seven. So again, this is a method for us to factor when we have four terms. It's important that we know this method because sometimes we end up with four terms and it's different than us factoring trinomials like what we have, we've been working on for the last two weeks. It is different, but it is still a method because this is a whole different type of problem. When I say, Ms. there's a lot of different types of problems, right? So are there a lot of different methods? Yeah, there are, 100% there are. So here's a problem that they mixed around. 18 g cubed minus five plus nine g squared minus 10 g. Now they mix this problem around and we could try grouping. If I ask you to look at the front group and the back group, is there anything in common in the front group and anything in common in the back group? Now the idea is sometimes when you try doing grouping, it doesn't, doesn't fall into place easily. But that's just right. There's nothing in common in the front. 18 and five don't mix and nine and 10 don't mix, but they both have a G. So if I took a G here and I wrote um, nine G minus 10, here's my problem. Does that look like what we have here? No, it doesn't. So in problems like this, maybe we have to reorganize these numbers because these weren't in order anyways. 18 G cubed plus nine G squared minus 10 G Minus five. So I just rewrote everything in order from highest to lowest exponent. And let's take a look now. Do we have anything in common in the front group and anything in common in the back group? Now this one will have a negative in the back group. So please be aware. So if I write it as nine times two, they both have a nine. Perfect. That's my greatest common factor. And they both have X squared nine. Uh, in this case, G squared left over what do we have left over? We have a two and a G left, two G. And in the back, we took the nine G squared. Oh, so it's just one, one left behind. Now I'm gonna make a mistake. So please follow along as I make this mistake. If I just took a five plus five from both of them, we would have a negative two G minus one. Folks, do these match? They don't, that means I need to go back and try to take out something else to make them match. Sometimes the signs don't match. If the signs don't match, you gotta go back and take out a negative from them. So I'm gonna go back, see that was wrong. In the front, we were good. But in the back, I'm gonna take out a negative five this time. If I take out the negatives along with it, we end up with a positive and a positive. And because I took out that negative, you can notice now that we have 2G plus one now. 2G plus one, we have left over nine G squared minus five. Okay. 
All right. That's it. That's our lesson today. Uh, one more thing that we want to make sure is that does this, is this really true? That if I factor this problem, we end up with this. The way we double check is we just multiply them out. 2 times 9 is 18. g times g squared is g cubed. 2 times 5 is negative 10 g. Okay. Then 1 times 9 is 9 g squared. And 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. This doesn't look like the right order, so but if I rewrite it the right order, 18 g cubed plus 9 g squared minus 10 g minus 5 is where we started from. That's our problem. So if you want, you can always double check by multiplying them back out, and then you should end up with our beginning problem. All right, that's it. Thank you very much.